This is the ZBrush interface when you first open it up. This is the basic layout. Uh, it's pretty simple. On the left hand side you have uh, tools, brushes, alphas, mat caps or material captures. In the middle of course you have the viewport. This is where you're going to do most of your work. You're going to be able to rotate models, sculpt on them, render them, etc. On the right-hand side, you'll have what will be a scrolling toolbar for different palettes. Right now, the palette showing is the tool palette. Up at the top, you have, of course, a menu. Basically, everything you can find down here in the UI, you'll be able to find a corresponding item up in the menu. They just double up. They make sure that you're covered in a variety of different ways. So instead of looking at this blank screen with a gradient, Let's look at importing an OBJ. An OBJ is a universal file format. It's used for any number of different programs. And of course, it's one of the most easily used file formats uh, among 3D programs. So we can just simply click this import button right here, grab our oil drum OBJ, and click open. Now, although it looks like You've imported something, nothing happened on the screen, but you will notice the, this little tool icon change. You can now see it's a drum. And this icon here changed too to a, this is what's called a drag rectangle icon, meaning it's, it's the function. So in order to get the, to, the oil drum into our viewport, we're just going to left click, drag. Okay, so there you can see it and then let go. So there it is on the screen. Now funnily enough, one of the biggest mistakes most students make is right off the bat, they go for, okay, cool, now I can, oops, oh, I, I can't sculpt, what's going on here? I'm getting all these different, to, oh no, what do I do? And I, I can't get out of it, what do I do? It's simple, we just hadn't gone into the editing portion yet. Until you, when you draw a model under your screen, you have to go into the edit, in order for it to say, oh, something's here, you want to work on it. Until you do that, the screen is basically a flat canvas, and it looks like you're just overwriting things. So if you hit Control N for New, again, left click, drag, pull it out, and you can then let go and then do one of two things. Either use the shortcut T on your keyboard, or just go up to this button here for Edit Object. As soon as you click that, you now have your particular object. I'm just left clicking and holding my mouse. All right? I can left click and hold my alt to pan around. And I can left click and then hold alt and then let alt go for me to zoom in and zoom out. Okay? Those that same functionality is with my pen. Right now I'm using my pen tool and I can do the same thing regardless. Zoom in, zoom out, etc. Okay. If I want to see my grid, there's generally a grid in ZBrush. It's Shift P. And that this way you can see what your orientation is for your particular model, and this is your grid as it's given in, in ZBrush. Again, that was Shift P. You can turn it on and turn it off. Okay. Also, you may notice that. It's, it's a little odd, like there's some foreshortening going on. This model doesn't look quite correct. Well, it's not that it, it doesn't look correct, it's right now it's an orthogonal view. Orthogonal is a view without perspective. In other words, if I'm going to look at a side view of this particular drum, I can get a perfect flat uh, representation of left, right, up, down. If I hit my P key, you can see it just changed. Now I have actual perspective, okay? So that's really simple. The P key will take you into perspective or back into orthographic. I'm gonna hit Shift P to bring the grid back on. I wanna show you something. One of the things that students sometimes uh, aren't sure about is that you can snap your views on your screen. The easiest way to do that, if you're trying to get to like a view where you can see some, this oil drum dead on from a side, you can just hold your shift key and then shift key and then just click in the background and kind of pull it down. Left, hold your shift, left click down. 
All right, that snaps it too. If I'm in my top view or trying to get it to a top view and I can't quite get it, again, if I hold my shift and just left click and drag, you can see it snaps and I get a nice perfect view of that, All right? I can do the same thing with the bottom, shift and snap, All right? That's, that's one of the universal keys to, to use and one of those to remember, all right? You can also hit your Shift F to be able to see the wireframe on this model. When I built this model, as you can see, it's fairly low polygon. And, and as you can see, you know, there's not a lot to it, but these are the different, this is the different wireframe that we'll have for the polygons. It'll also, it'll also show, it'll retain that when we subdivide the model. Let's, let me turn the Shift F, just to turn, turn that off for a second. By the way, this is our standard issue red wax matte cap as it shows on the screen. You see that in the lower right, the, the lower left? It says current material matte cap red wax. If I just left click on that, I, that icon right there, I've got all these different materials I can choose from. Very simple, I can well, let's switch to, let's say, a black one. So I get this gorilla color. I can do a gold color. And this is just left clicking and letting go. And I can have all these different materials. Now, when you open ZBrush up, you're not gonna get all of these materials. I actually have a, a, quite a number of uh, particular custom materials that people have uploaded in the past and that I tend to use on a variety of different things but you will still get quite a few materials built into ZBrush right off the bat. And again, you can just swap them out easily by just clicking on the particular material or the matte cap. This is what it would look like. This, it's a material capture to give you an idea of what this might look like if it were gray, or in this case, if it was gold. If I want to divide my model, it's just Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D, for instance. All right, you can see it got really nice and smooth and now that gold reflection looks really, really nice. All right, if I hit Shift F, my wireframe is there, but you can see I have far more subdivisions now going on with it, at least in the wireframe. It looks like I have a lot more stuff going on. I can do Shift D to go down in subdivision, Shift D again, Shift D again, Shifty again. As you can see, it goes back to the original model, what that was like, okay? Now, if I wanna go back up to the highest division, I can just hold, I've already subdivided. I don't have to read subdivide. I just hold the D key and it'll go right back up, okay? Shift F to turn off that wireframe, all right? I'm gonna do Shift P to turn off my grid. It's a nice material to work with. I would not recommend working with it when you're trying to sculpt. It can be a little um, distracting. I tend to do either the matte cap uh, red wax or I'll do this. This is a custom one, MAH modeling matte cap. Um, it's free. You can go to the uh, Pixelogic website and download all of the matte caps on earth that you want to be able to get. Do keep in mind, you can import all the different uh, matte caps you want but uh, do be careful not to grab everything up there. Grab ones that, that are going to help you see, for instance, say, a silhouette type of thing. What, what kind of edges can you see? Or something that might, uh, you know, give you a little bit of a gloss on it, you know, if you don't want to go super extreme. I, I know a student who actually downloaded, must have been three or 400 mat, mat caps. And so when he brought up his mat, ta, mat cap, uh, palette here, it literally covered the entire screen. You couldn't see anything past that. And I had him delete them all out and put in just the standard issue ones, all right? Again, keep it simple. Don't, don't go way overboard. For now, we'll just go back to our regular uh, red wax. By the way, when you click left click and just uh, have the, the matte cap palette come up, the latest ones you've used all appear in the top row. So it's not like you have to hunt them down if you liked any of these that you're working with, they'll, they'll put them up here for now, your last ones. And for instance, I'll use the skin shade one. Just click on that. And that'll be a skin shade. Obviously, right now that doesn't look good. But when it's it's a good skin uh, skin shade material, it's a good material to put on when you have like 
something organic on screen and you have color on the model, uh, that'll look, really look good and uh, be helpful, all right?